Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Um, today we're going to be doing a standard event and made some couple changes here to the Mono Red Aggro deck. Um, let's jump in. But uh, real quick, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And for all my returning viewers, thank you so much again for coming back and supporting me. I appreciate you guys quite a bit. Um, the deck list will be in the description, both on untapped.gg and also moxfield.com. And then there will also be a link to my playlists for both constructed and limited content, if you would like to check those out. Um, additionally, I do want to give thanks to my members and uh, really appreciate you guys. And you guys are really what, you know, helps make this channel possible. So thank you so much for supporting um, if you do want to become a member and get early access to my content, here is exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys, and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's jump into the deck here. Since the last iteration of Mono Red, I've made a couple changes. Um, basically, I ended up taking out, um, over the last couple versions, the Stingerback Terrors, which were a lot of fun, but just not quite what I wanted. And I put in um, three copies of Godric Cloaked Reveler, which has been pretty good. I did actually end up cutting the Demonic Ruckus just because I felt like eight pump effects kind of left me too open to interaction. And so there were a lot of games, like especially against like Blue White Control, where I ended up having, um, I, they would kill all my creatures and I'd have like Demonic Ruckus that just couldn't do anything with it. And it just felt really kind of not great and so i have upped the play with fire and shock count to full play set of both so i've just got a couple more burn effects and then i did also add two copies of invasion of ragatha part of the reason for this is because it does damage uh, four damage to face and the one damage that it does up to one target creature can help against like boros convoke or other maybe like uh, mono white humans to kind of get that extra little piece of advantage also, it's very good at flipping Invasion of Tarkir. And so since we're running four copies of Invasion of Tarkir, the Invasion of Ragatha makes a lot of sense. It's also just kind of a nice top end, more burn to face to help burn out the opponent if we need to go that direction. So we are at 19 lands. I've been kind of toying with sort of the land count. 19 feels pretty good. And I did change the Mishra's Foundry count up to two. I think it can support it. And then we've got 17 red sources here. I went down to one copy of Sokinzen. You might be able to go up to two copies here, but because I now have like five three drops and I do also have two Mishra's Foundries, I, I kind of want to be a little bit more cautious on the mana. So I'm just running one copy of Sokinzen here. But I certainly could understand if you wanted to run two. Okay, all that said, let's go ahead and let's hop into a standard event. As for how the deck has been doing um, on ladder, we're kind of hovering around mid 500s in Mythic. So it's been doing well, but not like exceptionally well. So yeah, I mean, overall I'm happy. It's got a win rate north of 70%. I think it's, um, we'll have to look at it here, but it's, it's still doing very well, but it could probably do better. So, all right, let's hop in. I know that you guys wanted to see sort of how this deck handles in a standard event to see if you can use this to help, um, you know, get some gold or some gems and whatnot. And so, uh, yeah, let's take a look and see how it does. Okay, opening hand looks great. We'll lead out here with Kumano faces Kakazan. 
And since we're no longer running the Demonic Ruckus, I'm pretty much always going to favor playing Kumano Faces Kakazan first. There might be like corner cases where you would play something else, but for the most part you want to play Kumano Faces Kakazan every time you see it on turn one if you have it. Okay, so we could go for Slick Shot Show Off and just start going here. We could go Swift Spear plus Shock. But I don't think we really care so much about the Hopeful Initiate at this point until it has like more support. So I think we're okay just going for the Show Off play here. Yeah, I'd much rather use my shock on the Copper Coat Vanguard. It is worth noting that um, if they go like Brutal Cathar on three, having access to shock would be really good. So it's possible we should just try to hold. And maybe that's better. But I think that we are pushing a fair amount of damage this way. And I guess, so if we like take out the Coppercoat Vanguard now, we'd be pushing two, four, six, ten. 10, drop them to seven. That feels pretty good. Maybe I'll just attack and just see if I can finesse some damage here. Yeah, and this is great because now we can go ahead and use it here on the um, yeah, just go there and then get them like that. So they're making the decision for us, but that's fine. And we have a lot of burn in this deck, so there's a pretty high chance that we draw extra burn, so not super worried about that. The other thing is, like, you know, when someone says good game a little early before the game's actually over, um, I'll usually hesitate just a little bit. You know, I do like to be a good sport, but um, I want to make sure that I've won before I <laughs> end up saying that. So we'll see. Yeah, so if they'd had like Brutal Cathar on three, it could have been a little bit problematic. But again, we're running 16 pieces of burn, and I guess 18 if you consider the um, Invasion of Ragatha as like minor pieces of burn. So we've got a decent chance of drawing into more. Excellent hand here. We'll lead out with Swift Spear. Could be blue white control, could be like Boros Convoke. There's so many different things this could be, but I think that there's a decent chance Monstrous Rage lands here. I guess if they have like, um, oh, if they have like March, they could get us, but then they'd have to sack a card, so I think I'm okay with that. So I think I'm gonna push for it, see what happens. And then at that point, it'd be a two for two. Um, since we've got extra burn in our hand, I'm just going to go ahead and use the shock to push more damage now. Like, if I didn't have the lightning strike there, I might have held the shock in case they have some kind of problematic creatures.
And again, we're just going to try to go for efficiency here. Yeah, they're just... That'll work. 2-0. and Also, you could run um, Witch Doctor Frenzy in this deck. Part of the reason that I don't is I really don't like dead cards against control um, or near dead cards. Sure, you could use them on like their Restless Anchorages and whatnot, but I really want to have the capability of going burn to face. And I think that Monstrous Rage is so good that it does necessitate a full play set, even though we're only running 15 creatures. Um, I guess you could say we are sort of running 23 because both Kumano faces Kakazan turns into a creature and so does Invasion of Tarkir. But this is just, yeah, Monstrous Rage is just like so good that I think you have to run it. But I did find like a lot of spots where having eight forms of pump that like weren't creatures really was kind of hindering and that's sort of why I took out the demonic ruckuses. Haven't seen this color slice in a little while, so not sure exactly what we're up against here. But having eight copies of Play With Fire slash Shock is really nice. It could have like a massive board wipe here, um, but I think that it is worth getting the Slick Shot show off going because we just want to push damage as much as poss possible here. So I think I'm okay opening the door to potentially losing both of our creatures. I guess the other play we could go with is like play with fire and then like plot this, but that's giving up a lot of damage. So I think I'm just gonna go for it. And now they're getting potentially into burn range. Like we've got invasion of Ragatha, which is like a third of their life right here. And we have a lot more burn in our deck too. And like if they don't have the board wipe, it's super good. I don't think we have any interest in flipping invasion. Like they're getting low enough that we just wanna go face. So I think we just try to triple spell this turn and just see what happens. So we'll lead out here with the play with fire and then see what they do. just to minimize as much as possible getting blown out. And like, they very easily could have two pieces of burn here, but I, I don't think that they would... Hmm, I, yeah, let's leave Godric on top just in case they draw into like a board wipe or something like that. Now they're at 10, so we have them potentially dead here. I think we kind of want to play chicken here and just pass and see what they do. I think going for the Monstrous Rage here is, is super dicey. So it feels like they've got at least one piece of removal. Could have two. Yeah, this is a little... I'm not sure if we should go for the Rage here. But I feel like we're giving up a lot of damage if we don't go for it. So I think we try it, see what happens. Like if they haven't got a second piece of removal, like they're pretty much just dead. <sighs> yeah, okay, they have the second go for it throat. It's not over, but that was really bad. Still, I think that was a decent shot of going for it there. Like they didn't for sure have two pieces.
Yeah, well, that was a nice pickup. This is rough. I don't think we want to give up invasion just because it represents so much damage. Um, and it's rough because, like, Rage is also really good with Swift Spear. Because then we can start pushing... I guess we'll have this as a 2-3, which eventually this can block. We probably just cut Rage here. I think it's probably the safest play. It's unfortunate, but... Like, especially if they can draw into more burn. Uh, that's super awkward. Yeah, the turn that they had double go for the throat was really rough. Still, we can draw a bunch of cards this way, so this is kind of nice. Um, we could also just like double push, but I think flipping this is pretty good. So it slows us down a little bit. I think it's worth it though. It's enough card advantage to try to get back into it. And we should be able to flip this for, it looks like, yeah, for one. So that's pretty good. Let's see, I think it's just one, right? Yeah, okay. And now I think we're pretty good at racing. We still definitely really want to draw burn here, but this this is now potentially winnable. Okay. Um, we can try to set up like a Godric turn. I think that's probably the move. So I don't think we want to trade Godric with either of these yet. I think we just try to set up next turn to get it into the air. Okay, that's pretty good, because we can use that to extra pump Godric. So now if we full out, full out swing, they have three blockers, block, 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 can get to six, yeah, they're dead, that'll work. Nice.
Yeah, the Codebreaker was super clutch there, getting us back into the game. But I think that, like, the turn that they had double go for the throat... I mean... I guess you could possibly intuit that they had two pieces of removal there, but, like, if they didn't have it, the game was just over right there. And I think it was worth going for. Okay, 3-0. and All right, let's pick up 3-0 and so far. Yeah, so far the deck has really been performing pretty well. Um, happy with the changes for the most part. Okay, opening hand looks great. Okay, looks like we're up against Boros Convoke. We definitely want to take out the Warden if at all possible. Um, I guess we can attack to see if they are foolish enough to block. There's always that possibility. I mean, they probably never will, but you, you can't discount the possibility. And then we might as well also just get Monstrous Rage going here. <clears throat> this way we stop the turn to Knight Errant if they have Gleeful Demolition. Okay, it's a nice pickup. Now we can safely go Codebreaker and then attack with both and see what they do. I guess we could also play with Fire the Inspector. Like, we probably want to take that out anyways. So even though Monstrous Rage is like the more damage play, I think we do the play with Fire here just to keep them off of Night Errant Mana. I guess we can see if they block, but I'd, I'd rather just remove it, I think, pre-combat. I don't think they're going to block with their Epicure anyways here. And if they do, we're happy. Now, unless they draw into uh, Demolition, they won't be able to go for Knight Errant. So they're representing um, reinforcements, but they've got to pay life to, to cast it, which is pretty awesome. So here I think Monstrous Rage just gets it done. Uh, we could go Godric here, but if we go Godric, I think they just block Godric, go to two. They might potentially have some crazy outs. I think Monstrous Rage just takes care of the whole mess. And I think they've got force blocks here, assuming that we've got something. So I guess their their best play is to like hope we've got nothing, but this works. And now we can force through with a monstrous rage here for lethal.
Okay, 4 0. Let's keep it pushing. Opening hand looks good. Not sure what we're up against here. I think I do want to shock though. Um, actually, I guess on the off chance that they have Boros, I mean, we might need this shock later, so I think I'm going to hold it. Oh yeah, now that we're we're up against um, the Voice of the Blessed deck, I guess this is probably Orzov Amalia nonsense, but either way, we're happy to play the Codebreaker, take out the Voice, and start going to town. <clears throat> Classification should have enough burn to close it out. Let's see, I think this is three, six, ten, and then shock should finish it. Hopefully. Humans, interesting. All right, that'll do it. I guess there's like a mono white aggro list that runs Voice of the Blessed and just tries to like get the extra life off of like um, the Lunark veterans and the uh, intrepid adversaries, probably something like that. Five and zero. Oh. But yeah, against the creature decks, like all the extra burn is super nice. And it's been a while since we've had a standard format where we've had access to two versions of Shock in Play With Fire and Shock. So that has been really fun. Okay, hand looks good. So I'd be curious to know if anybody is uh, looking at hitting top 250 for, um, I guess, I think next month is Explorer, I want to say. I haven't played Explorer, I think, in a long time. Or, yeah, I'm just not familiar with the format, so not sure we're going to get there, but probably we'll try to stay in the top 1,200. Okay, World Souls Rage, or some version of it. Probably teamer, but there's also been like um, like a four color slash bant version. So I think here we just want to push as much damage as possible, and like time is of the essence. This doesn't really kill anything, so I think we probably just use this now. And I think this is a deck that we try to flip invasion 
do we? Um, I'm not sure actually. Yeah, I mean, it can be pretty good, certainly. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of torn on the, the play here. We might not have time to, like, flip this and do nonsense. I think I'm just, just going to try to go for straight damage and see how that works out. Although, I guess since we've got Godric, if we can get, like, the double thing happening, that'll be pretty cool. <sighs> All right, let's try it out. I'm not sure if this is right, but we'll give it a go. I guess it all just depends on if they have like the um, ill-timed explosion on time. And actually, if we can go like Monstrous Rage on top of this, we have a decent chance of living through ill-timed explosion. But this is a very speculative play. I don't know if it's right to try to go Invasion first here. Now I think we just... Let's see, we can go Codebreaker, Rage to flip it. Otherwise, if we want to go Godric here, it'll take an extra turn. I think we just want to flip it now. And then the real question is, are they going to play Nyssa on turn 3 or turn 4? So Analyst currently gets them 3 life. So this is actually kind of fun. If we go Invasion here, we can go 4 to face. Use the one from this plus the two from Thundermaw to take out the Analyst. Um, I kind of like that because then we save Lightning Strike for the Nyssa. So we can't really let this thing untap, I don't think. Otherwise, our play is a little bit hokey on mana. So I think I'm just going to go for the Invasion here. And I don't think it's worth flipping this. Um, let's see, is that... Like, Lightning Strike would do five? That's not bad. Um, but because this attack mana, or attack damage is kind of awkward, I'm just going to go face here, I think. So we don't have, like, infinite time. Now if they have ill time for four, it's pretty awkward. If we manage to dodge the ill time explosion, though, we should be able to close it out. Okay, there's the Nyssa. Did they save the special land for it? Yes, they did. Okay. So they can potentially set up with, like, another analyst here. But they drew a second Nyssa, which is awesome for us. <laughs> Oh well, I guess they had the Analyst anyways, that's fine. Okay, so now... I think we have to Lightning Strike the... Actually, no, we just have them dead to Defiant plus Lightning Strike. Okay, they're just dead. That works. Yeah, Flipping Thunder Ma was definitely the play. It's kind of hard to see it because I haven't, like, done this line before. But it worked out very well. Nice. That's good to know for future games. Uh, 6 and 0. Oh. Final boss. See if we can do a clean sweep.
Also, I've come to the opinion that against blue white control, I'm just gonna just like try to jam face and just like if they have the um, turn three lockdown, like we just eat it just because it's so maddening to try to go long game with them. I think we want to actually take out the Warden here. It's a bit more dangerous. Although I guess we can kill it next turn with Invasion, so we're probably okay. Question is, do we want to kill both? I feel like we have to be a little careful here. Because, like, if they have... Um, if they have Brunkathar, we want to have answers to that. I guess we have two Lightning Strikes, so we're probably fine. All right, so we'll just take out the officer here. Hopefully this doesn't bite us, but I just want to have like good control of the battlefield. And invasion was pretty nice here because that's a nice, yeah, it's a nice pickup. Okay, that's good. Actually, that's really nice because we've got invasion for that. So that's pretty, it's pretty great. Question is if we get the bat. No, since we've got play with fire, we can just get the evangelist here. Although we're hoping to draw another red source, that'd be really nice. Ooh, Night Errant was nasty. Boo, boo hiss. Okay, Copper Coat plus Veteran. It's pretty good. Um, I guess we just want to go Invasion here. Invasion on Invasion. That's gotta be right. I guess if they have Brutal Cathar, it's super awkward. It's the only problem. Don't really have a good answer to it, though. I guess... Actually, heads up play there. Maybe we should have waited for, like, combat. And then we could have, like, used, like, Play With Fire or Lightning Strike. Yeah, that probably would have been better. Crap. Hopefully they don't have Brutal Cathar to punish us. Okay. That might be, that might be a game-losing decision right there. So, yeah. I think maybe... In hindsight, the better play would have been to wait for combat and then use, like, play with fire to get the last point off of it. Because now they can just push and go with initiate. Yeah, that was... Okay. Fortunately, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah, that knight errant is super nasty. Although, this is a pretty good pickup. So I guess we could we could double lightning strike here. Oh, this is just so bad. Um, we're at fourteen. How do we win this? I think we have to lightning strike plus play with fire on blockers, and then try to blow them out with our. Thunder Maw. Problem is, is like they, they play Copper Coats. This is going to be a 4-4, four four, which is super awkward, so we can't get their Initiate. Otherwise, we could go like Double Lightning Strike, take out the Initiate plus Warden, but then we've got like nothing. Yeah, this is super awkward. I think that's how we have to play it, though. This is just... Yeah, I think we misplayed earlier. It's going to cost us. Yep. Nope. 
guess now we just eat their warden. I think we want to save Lightning Strike because we might need the three toughness. Um, yeah, probably. I don't know if the mana is going to matter here. Like, now we just block Warden, take a bunch of damage. is so bad um all right so thunder maw goes at regatha we take out vanguard for three. Oh, i think we're just dead i don't think there's any way we could possibly live through this turn i guess like maybe they misplay that's basically what we're going on yeah because we need to take out copper coat here I guess like now what we can do is we can go like lightning strike to finish it get the guy use that to block lightning strike kill their three four okay adeline i think for sure closes it out though because yeah we can take care of these two but we still yeah we're still super dead so assuming that they don't mess up attackers we're done okay Whew. All right, that was a misplay, I think, on waiting for combat. That ossification totally blew us out. It was a tough game, though. All right, final boss, round two, The Vengeance. I don't know if anybody's seen, like, Rambo First Blood Part 2, but uh, <laughs> it was an epic movie. That and UHF. Yeah, definitely one minor misplay there. I guess fairly major given the match, but one misplay cost us that game. Okay, hand looks good. Lots of burn. Ooh, domain. Okay. Uh, this is another one where I think we just want to go face as quickly as possible. Don't think we can wait here. Um, I don't know that we have time to flip this. I guess since we have invasion, it's possible. I guess just for mana here, we maybe we try it. So if we go Swift Spear plus Invasion, it's only four points. Can't flip it this turn. I feel like we don't have time. Hmm, yeah, I'm just not sure. I think we just go Godric here in the next turn, like have Godric lift off. Although I suppose, actually, if we have Godric do three to the Tarkir, and then make it a dragon. I think this will actually pay for itself. So provided that they don't have removal, it actually would make sense to go after the Tarkir here. Like we're giving up three, but we'll get two back and we'll have, I don't know if this is right. We're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. 
So it's kind of speculative here also. If they have removal, it's super awkward, of course. Yeah, so I think we just go Invasion here instead of... Or we go Invasion of Tarkir instead of Ragatha. And then Tarkir finishes off Tarkir. This will become a dragon. They probably have, like, Binding or something. But, like, on the off chance that they don't, it's pretty great. Or if they have, like, Depopulate. Like, there's so many ways that this goes wrong. But it's pretty fun. I don't think we try to flip this one, though. Although, I mean, actually, that, that is kind of funny. Like, did we just go super big here? God, do we just go for it? I think we do, actually. You know what? I think we go for it. Because we can pump dragons. So, like, if they deal with Godric, oh well. But... Yeah, if they have do pop if they have depopulate, we're so sad it's not even funny. <laughs> but if they don't, this is gonna be a glorious turn. I mean they could have like oh god, there's so many things they could have. Yeah, they had to depopulate. Oh well. I definitely wanted to live the dream there. Um So I think we just go foundry plus foundry plus rage. Hit them for five. Regatha is like four damage for sure in case they have blockers. So I think that's actually probably right. The uh, the rage token is going to fall off, but I think it's worth the damage. Then if we draw like lightning strike or something, we can hopefully get there. But like depopulate was so bad. Although I, I was definitely playing a little bit speculative and loose with the Godric, so I don't know. That might have been a wrong line of uh, line of play. Do we have time to refill with Codebreaker? Oh, uh, we can pay four. I guess we could. Yeah, we could try to re rebuild. I think let's go for the invasion first just to get the damage in. And then if they don't have like life gain and we just like rip a uh, lightning bolt off the top, we can get there. Ah, of course they've got the herd migration. Oh well. So it goes. All right. So now if we go code breaker, it's going to cost us still four. Okay. Yeah, that depopulate was so brutal. Now we have like one turn to get there. I don't know if it's possible. I guess if we I'm trying to think of like a sequence of draws we could get here to make this happen. I don't think so. I guess we'll see the top card. I don't think it's actually possible, though. Yeah. Yep, not going to do it. Okay. 
Final boss, round three, the vengeance. <laughs> I admit those last two games were a little bit loose, but you know what? You gotta have fun in life. You gotta just, sometimes you just gotta go for it. Even if you know it's bad and it's probably not gonna work. Just gotta run the Hail Mary sometimes. Yeah, probably in reality against Domain, instead of trying to get fancy with flipping the invasions, you probably just want to go face. It's a good hand. We are up against our nemesis. Or one of the nemesis. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll probably just start off with Kumano faces Kakazan here. If we had like invasion in hand, I'd probably play the Swift Spear instead. Yeah, they have a nasty opener here. This is going to be tough, potentially. And unfortunately, we don't have answers for this warden. Not yet. So I guess we just go for slick shot show off. Because that's probably going to be the only thing big enough to punch through that warden. Boros Convoke? Oh, this is like a weird version of Boros Convoke. I mean, it's really good with the veterans against us, for sure. Yeah, we're definitely in trouble, big time. They're at 26. Oh my god, this is going to be brutal. Okay, that was a good draw. So now, I think we got to deal with the Warden. These veterans are just trouble. Um, okay, so we go Invasion. And then play with fire. Yeah. Flip invasion. Like if we're gonna do a comeback, I mean, this is gonna be how it happens. Okay, them drawing a card is like, that's so good for us. They're like a bazillion life, but I think that's okay. Never trading here. <laughs> Unless we absolutely have to.
So we got to start going after the veterans as long as we've got Kumano in play. I think we need to take care of those. Oh my god, that was such a good draw. Whew! Okay. So now we can go Invasion. Take out one of the veterans. Question is, like, do we play... Oh yeah, we can actually play Swift Spear and everything. Oh, this is great. Okay. This is so good. I guess now we can take out Knight Errant also. Maybe we take out Knight Errant now. I suppose this is still like representing four damage though, since they've got Imidan. So it's kind of the same. I, I guess we do take out Knight Errant here. Yeah, oh man, I don't want to, but... I think we have to. And then, do we send, I guess, yeah, since we're gonna use Monstrous Rage, do we wanna get in with everybody? I think we wanna hold back these two for dealing with stuff on the ground. Cause they can still push a lot of damage here. So this one goes face. This one gets the other dragon. I think Swift Spear hangs back. Yeah. And then we Monstrous Rage the Thunder Maw. I think. Wow, they got rid of Demolition? That's ridiculous. That's crazy. Why would they ever... Oh, I suppose they didn't have the red mana for it. Okay. That was bananas, though. Okay. You're throwing down the gauntlet. This is, this is awesome. Can we do the damage in time? All right, so... Double trigger, uh, we're gonna get four triggers, I think, right? Two for each dragon, so one, two, three, four. Yeah, this is great. Uh, I think we just attack in the air, leave these two back on the ground. I think that's the play. Suppose we could be like super safe and leave black, leave back at a slick shot, but we can kill them fairly quickly. Let's see, because we can do nine, 11, Two, four, six, eight, nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-three. Good lord, we can almost kill them. Okay, I think we actually just to be safe here, we hold the slick shot back in case they've got nonsense. Okay, one. Wait a second. Where is this one? Okay, yeah. Two. Three. Let's see. Four. Yeah, we just play it super safe. Yes. Woo! Dragons for the win. All right, got there. Sweet, sweet prizes. Seven and two. Two of those games were arguably <laughs> a little loose, but thanks guys for watching. And uh, yeah, I think this deck is great. So I recommend it. But uh, yeah, 
we'll see you here in the next one.